April 4th. Celebrating Resurrection. Resurrection. And I'm going to start today by maybe defining for you quantum theology. Because the ultimate goal of quantum theology is to have Christ be manifested in your life. In the fullness of. In the world of perfection. I mean, you should be excited when I say that, world of perfection. You don't live the life of others and you're going to find peace and joy. You can only live the life through Christ and you will have joy and peace. And above all that, require an understanding of who you are. Who you are. It has been said that you are spirit, soul, and body. And that's the area that I'm talking about, quantum. Meaning you are one personal being. But within you there's more, let's say, depthness to you. You are deeper than just the physical body that you see. Even science is proving that. Even the Shroud of Turin, the last study and challenge that they had done with it, they had decided that it has not been done by man, but that there was something beyond their understanding. Even physicists do not understand. But one thing is true, that if Jesus Christ rose from the dead, 2,000 years ago. If he did it, so can we. <coughs> and I really believe that the understanding of quantum in your life will open a lot of gates for you. And I'm going to start with our pictures today. And in those pictures, before we go anything, I'm going to draw somebody, and we're going to call it you again. from the Word of God how the commandment that God gave Moses had to do with those three. Even Jesus commanded you the same thing too. And when you understand those three, you will understand you. And you should be able to arrive, for example, the soul, within the soul, there are two more things. One will be your mind. And two over here, the heart. And the heart is the bridge to the spirit 
or let me call that this spirit, this, this guy, the glorious spirit called the Holy Spirit. The heart, communicate with the spirit, the mind is the bridge to the heart. Today, science, if anybody watched Glenn Beck over here at all, <laughs> he got three guys writing three different books. And all of them had come with, with a conclusion in the, in the level of consciousness, I said, because while he was asking, Glenn was asking, suddenly people wrote things in books. And on writing those things in books, he realized, wow, the country's looking for direction. And he mentioned prophetic, he mentioned Moses, in the area prophetic. He mentioned, uh, I don't remember the other two. Uh, when you are in a desperate situation, you take action. You make things happen. And then the other one, I cannot recall right now. But anyway, all three of them talk about one simple thing. It is you taking charge for your life. The only way you can protect the country is by you taking charge for your life. Well, that's not new. My also picture that I drew over there, that is not new. That's what started in the garden. And I show you an incident that happens. In the book of The book of Genesis 13, chapter 3, verse 13, 13. After the man and the woman ate of the fruit of the garden, he says in 13, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And remember, because of this event, we celebrate resurrection today. Because of what happened in the garden is how we're celebrating, why are we celebrating resurrection today? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did it, did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed of a whole cattle. But one of the areas that we forget that if man ate of that tree, what was going to happen to man? He was going to die. Man was going to die. So the question that God asked the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And she said, What? The serpent, what? Beguiled me. So again, right away, something happened, something, a discussion, an extra comment, an extra word took place here. And for that happening, the serpent get cursed after that, and even the land, the earth get cursed by it. So that was an interesting event that happened. The other one that happened, he had to do with a case that we don't talk much about. But well, the same question is going to be asked. Cain. Have you read much about Cain in the Bible? Hmm? Cain and Abel. What Cain did to Abel? He killed Abel. And the question when it will come to him too also, which it is what? What have you done? 